Hello. Well, uh, not much progress since the last uh, video, but I'll just update you. Um, apologies for some background noise in some of these shots. Uh, there's, there's a lot of pressure washing going on uh, outside. So, uh, on we go. I'm just putting the lead screw nuts back on the cross slide. This thing is bolted into position and then there's this steel piece with a slot which engages with that grub screw and so I think as we tighten that, as we tighten that grub screw up it's going to push this that way thereby increase the separation between the threads in here and the threads in here and re remove the backlash. I was wondering why these two holes were slightly larger than those two holes given that the bolts were exactly the same size and that's, that's to allow this bit to move around a bit and align itself with respect to that bit when the lead screw is in there. One slightly odd thing about this cross slide is that it's got two oiling points, well actually three, this, this one obviously oils the lead screw, no problem with that. It's got two oiling points here, which if I turn it over, one comes out here and the other one comes out there. This one actually not only oils this, but also this dovetail, whereas that one oils the dovetail, but not this slide, which is slightly odd. Would one not have put this slightly further this way? Right, well I'm just going to reassemble the cross slide and put it on the saddle. You don't need to see that. Well, I'm just going to clean the top slide, or compound as the Americans call it. That's what it looks like at the moment. Well, I've encountered a slight problem with um, getting this uh, top slide apart. Um, it, I, to get this off, because I can't slide it off because of the um, lead screw nut in there, um, I need to remove the gib. But the problem is I can't remove the gib because it will only go that far in that direction and that far in that direction. Now the reason for that is, although I've got all these grub screws on, this one here is the lock and uh, there is a, uh, <coughs> a brass piece down there which is engaged in a slot on the gib. And, um, because it's brass, I can't get it out with a magnet. And it's just stuck in there. I've been trying to get it out by uh, just giving it a bit of deceleration. But it won't come out. Just pushing it one way, now pushing it the other way. I hope you saw that that's the problem. But I don't have a solution to it. What I could do is drill into this, tap it, but I can't tap it because I can't stop it rotating. Whether it will rotate or not, I don't know the shape of it. Bit of a problem that. Well, I tried to drill it out by hand, but that didn't work, so 
I'm going to try and gently mill it out. The trouble is, I don't, I don't, I don't know, obviously can't see what I'm doing, so I have to keep winding it up to have a look and see whether I'm hitting the gib or not. And then winding it back again. And repeat. I think it might come now. Right, well, I had to drill quite a lot of that out, but it, it's still stuck in there. Oh, I see, I can knock it out on the back. So it can be knocked out from the back, but I didn't have access to the back, of course, whilst it was in there. And that is the uh, the culprit. Well, these are the four holes for the gib screws, and this is a hole which went right through. It appears to be drilled fairly cleanly, but it's not shown on the parts diagram. This is the hole for the, the gib lock. That part of it is what my milling created when I was trying to mill out the brass bit that was stuck in here. I don't know what I don't know whether this hole is supposed to be there or not. The back of this is not accessible until the gib has been withdrawn from the dovetail, so it doesn't perform any useful function. The problem I have now is that if I make a new brass piece to fit in here, it's it's not going to be fat enough to to push on the gib unless I block this hole up some way, somehow. I don't have a welder, I'm not very good at brazing and whatever I did with this heating it, it's likely to distort it, isn't it? I personally think that this hole shouldn't be there so that the, the, the brass lock needs to bear or be able to push hard on this gib. If it left me up to me, I would actually put two locks in as, as well. Just one is a bit feeble. Maybe the right answer is for me to make two new locks and just ignore this. Right, so I've made those two holes and I've made corresponding recesses in the gib. All I need now is two M6 set screws with the right kind of end which is exactly what I haven't got. So I cleaned up and cold blued those various bits of the saddle that um, I had difficulty getting undone. Um, so hopefully that won't happen again. Right, well I put the saddle and the cross slide and the top slide on. What I'm going to do now is put the gap bed back in. Right, so all the surfaces are clean. It's got a light coating oil. I mean, this might not look be very clean, but I've resisted abrading it because that's the mating surface. And that's the bottom. So... in like that and the really important thing is this V-way. It doesn't matter if this V-way is out of alignment because the tailstock never going to get that far. 
that this has got to be absolutely right. The thing that's supposed to align it is this taper pin. I don't know quite how one is supposed to drive that in. It seems to just drop in there. We've got this grub screw which we can do up, which just pushes against the headstock. We can do it up with difficulty. Alright, I've done that grub screw up a bit. Um, if I just run my fingernail along here, it stops there. And if I run it along this way, it doesn't stop. So I guess it should go. further than that. Now let's see what happens when we put the uh, screws in. There isn't a washer on this one. No, there isn't, so. It's not as well matched as it was before, because I, I really couldn't actually see the join before. But I think if I tighten that down now, we'll see what happens. I wonder what the torque spec on this is. If only we had a torque spec for the house and then 300. But we don't, do we? There's no torque spec at all. And that's the wrong alloy key. And that's also the wrong key. Um, I This is set at 40 newton meters. All right, I'll get an extension. My 40 newton meters. Well, I'll just do. Better, I can't feel any of it. I can feel a bit there, that doesn't matter. This feels good. I can't put a torque wrench on this. I just do it up yay tight. Well, actually, I've just looked up what's the recommended tightening torque for M10 high tensile set screws and it actually says something between 70 and 80 newton meters so that's a lot more than the, what I did before so I'm going to give it a bit more this 
additional tweak. Well, that's the front B way. And if we go back to across the thing, that's the back V way, which doesn't matter, and that's the back flat way, which does matter. Looks pretty okay to me. Looking at the back flat way, um, of course it's changing all the time, but the point is, as it slides over that gap, it doesn't change noticeably, does it? I mean, it's smooth. This is one slope of the front V way. Of course, this is. It's going to be changing all the time anyway as I move it. Again, I don't think it changes noticeably as we go over that join. I got some rubber way wipers off the internet and I nickel plated these old um, metal fitments. And what I've just realised is I should have chased these threads before I put this saddle on here. Luckily I can slide the saddle off the end uh, but that's something that should have been done when I had the thing in a more convenient place. Yes, this is definitely something that I should have done before when I had the saddle naked because in the, with the uh, cross slide on so on um, it's uh, it's hard to balance it on its end which I would prefer to have done anyway we'll survive That seems to work okay. So those are the two metal blocks under the front of the saddle which holds it down onto the ways. Obviously those blocks should be done up as tightly as they can be subject to one still being able to move the saddle around. Now I've experimented with doing them up here nice and tightly so that if you do this it doesn't move up and down but then I find that if I try and move the saddle back here it jams and that is yet further evidence of wear on the waves the ways are more worn here, so the saddle is lower, so I have to do this up tighter. So then when I bring it back here, it jams. Now, um, one way of fixing that would be to remove some metal from the underside of this. But that would be entirely the wrong thing to do. The right thing to do is to re-grind these ways. Um, or one could set one could set these blocks tight for where one's using the lathe here, and then if one wanted to use the lathe further on, further back, you could loosen them. That would be a damn nuisance, wouldn't it? But the inability to to have this set properly tight across the full length of the ways is another reason why I should have had these ways reground. I was just looking in the bottom of the headstock gearbox in the uh, to take a decision whether I need to flush it with kerosene. This stuff here is quite 
sticky whether it is more similarly done further down there I don't know but then then I was looking at it and I saw down there something interesting it looks to me like a dowel whether that's part of the gearbox that has fallen off I hope not I certainly didn't drop it down there but that's for another time